And so if you're a guy and you are sick and you're fat and you're out of shape and you simply accept that, that you will live a life of mediocrity and average and being sick, you become a liability to the people who rely on you. Welcome to the Bedros Coolian Show. Hey friends, welcome to the Bedros Coolian Show. I'm Bedros Coolian, and today we're gonna talk about getting your house in order. And I think it's a very important conversation. And in fact, this conversation is a byproduct of a talk that I did uh, to my good friend, Jimmy Rex's tribe. He's got a tribe of high level entrepreneurs. And he was like, hey, Bedros, what is the one thing that these guys need to do to really flip the switch and take their lives, their money, their meaning, their impact, their legacy to the next level. And I said, they need to get their house in order and there's never a better time than now to get their house in order. So with that said, let's get started. Guys, listen, before I do though, before I jump into this episode, I wanna tell you about the Average is the Enemy shirt that I'm wearing. Now, you guys know that at the end of every episode, I tell you that Average is the Enemy, that success is your responsibility and change can take place in an instant if you are willing to flip the switch, right? Well, Fuel Hunt, is a company that I invested in a couple of years ago. I was a customer. If you don't know the whole story behind this, I was a customer of Fuel Hunts before I was an investor. And the two founders, Joey and Drew, um, out of Philadelphia, they, they just loved the whole idea of creating apparel that has a meaningful message for the hardest workers in the world. And of course, when I saw their first message, which was everybody wants to eat, but Fuel Hunt, which has now become the name of the company, that resonated with me. Everybody wants to eat, but few are willing to go out there and hunt and do the work. And recently, this past July 4th, we launched, and I say we because now I'm part of Fuel Hunt, we launched the Americana line, which was a special line that was all made in the United States, dirt to shirt. I'm talking about the, the thread, the, the sewing, the putting the shirts together, the labeling, and even the logos. Well, one of their most popular shirts were the Average is the Enemy shirt. And at the time it was made offshore. Well, guess what? Now they have the Average is the Enemy shirt made in the USA, dirt to shirt. And so every Fuel Hunt gear that you will find on FuelHunt.com is made in the United States. And it is made dirt to shirt in the United States, not printed in, not labeled in, not kind of, sort of, None of that BS, just straight up US made. And that's why I love doing business with these guys because they know that they are going to outfit the hardest workers across the United States. And they wanted to make sure that we do everything right. And that means US made. So if you like this shirt, if you like the mantra, averages the enemy, go to fuelhunt.com and get your shirt. And now I wanna to talk to you guys about getting your house in order. Like I said, I was, I was hanging out with Jimmy Rex and his tribe of dudes. He had asked me to speak to them. These are all entrepreneurs. And he said, Bedros, what is the most powerful message you can give them? And I said, well, the message really is how to get your house in order. Because if you don't get your house in order, then when chaos strikes, when you find yourself on that X of the ambush, things are not gonna be favorable for you. And so what we did is we decided to kind of break down what getting your house in order looks like. And so I wanna share that with you because I think it's very important. And you guys, I need you to understand something. For me, I understand that getting my house in order means that I'm not going to be a liability, right? Getting my house in order isn't just about financials. Most people, when they hear getting your house in order, it's about, hey, make, make, make a lot of money, make some good investments, make sure that you're not in a financially dependent place where you have to beg and borrow. God forbid there's a crisis or something goes wrong. And that is one part of getting your house in order. Truth is, one of the bigger parts for me of getting your house in order is getting you, your shit in order. As men, we are the leaders of our family. As men, we are the leaders of our companies. As men, we are the leaders of our tribe. As men, we lead the people who count on us. And so if you're a guy and you are sick and you're fat and you're out of shape and you simply accept that, that you will live a life of mediocrity and average and being sick, you become a liability to the people who rely on you. You and I both know that if you have a few pounds to lose, if you are mentally screwed up, 
in terms of you're finding yourself anxious, depressed, you're out of alignment and congruency with the man that you want to be, you are a liability to your family. You're a liability to your kids, to your spouse, to your work, to your company, to your friends, the tribe who look up to you as a role model. And you might think, well, hey, Bedros, I'm not a role model to anyone yet. Yes, you are. I promise you there's someone out there, maybe even if you live in your mom's fucking basement and you play those video games wearing your Crocs and putting your fat, sweaty feet into those Crocs because those Crocs are designed to be fat foot friendly because they don't even collapse anymore. They just stay open so you can slide your feet in. You don't need laces. Why would you have to bend down and tie your laces? If you're fat, they made Crocs so that you can slide your feet in. Now, don't get me wrong. I know a lot of friends who are pro athletes who wear Crocs. My son and daughter are massively athletic, in great shape, and they wear Crocs. But I'm talking about the people who are wearing Crocs because they don't want to wear shoes that are laced up. They don't want to bend over and actually hold their shoe open and slide their foot in because they don't have the capacity anymore to bend over and tie their shoes. They have to hold their breath when they're tying their shoes. When they sit back up from tying their shoes, their eyes are all bloodshot like they just did some heroin. You should not have to be in that condition for tying your shoes and therefore have to resort to wearing these wide open Crocs and sweat, putting your sweaty fat platypus feet in it but the reason I'm telling you that you're a liability if you're sitting in your mom's basement playing video games wearing those crocs is because your mom and dad rely on you you are a role model to them you are an example to your to your siblings maybe to your older brother and sister maybe to your younger brother and sister and if you are going to stay unhealthy I mean physically unhealthy I mean mentally unhealthy I mean emotionally weak and dependent and unhealthy then you are a liability. You're one step closer to going to the hospital. You're one step closer to going to the grave. And is that what you want to be, right? As men, it is our job, it is our duty, it is our responsibility to become an example, a shining example. The alternative is to be a cautionary tale of the type of man not to be. The type of man who is always broke, who is always dependent on others, the kind of man who can't carry his own weight, the kind of man who has to ask for help from others because he chose to take the easy path in life and therefore now his life has become hard, right? If you've ever read the book, The Way of Men by Jack Donovan, and in fact, if you watch this show on YouTube, then you know we did a YouTube exclusive where I had Jack Donovan here in the studio and I interviewed him. He's got an amazing book called The Way of Men. In his book, he talks about the core fundamentals of a man can be broken down into four categories. Strength, and that is both physical and mental strength. Courage, the ability to charge into something and be a protector, to be someone who is courageous and willing to stand between good and evil, right? Mastery. You must have mastery of something, the ability to build, to plan, to create, because as he says it in his book, not every guy is going to have the strength and the courage to want to go and fight a war, to go and catch the saber-toothed tiger. However, in the absence of not having the strength and courage, you better show up to the tribe with the skill set of mastery. Maybe you know how to make a spear, a bow and arrow. You know how to make a net where you can cast a net and catch something, right? But you have to be useful to humanity. Otherwise, you're a liability if you're not useful to humanity. And the fourth and final thing is honor. You must be someone who's honorable to belong to the tribe. You must be someone who was loyal to belong to the tribe. You must be someone who's got core values that the rest of the tribe subscribes to, right? And if you have honor, mastery, courage, and strength, then you are tribe worthy. You know, in a perfect world, we would have all four of those traits and abilities, but you must have at least one or two of those so that you are useful to the tribe. And you think, well, hey, this isn't caveman times anymore. We're not Sparta. We're not going to war. We're not going to be hunting something down. Well, guess what? When an earthquake happens, when a hurricane happens, when there's a power outage, when there's a food shortage, it is the men that they rely on. And are you going to be the kind of guy who goes, sorry, I don't have any skills, so I've got no mastery. I don't have any strength. I've never trained. I've never conditioned myself to be strong mentally or physically. 
and I don't have courage because I've never taken the time to test myself to see if I have what it takes in the areas of combat. I've never done jujitsu. I've never done any boxing. I've never done any Muay Thai. I've never wrestled. I've never tested my body because I was too comfortable sitting in this couch being lazy. Then what's left? Honor? A man that doesn't have any of those three does not have honor. There's no way you have loyalty because a man who's not strong, who's not courageous, a man who doesn't have mastery is willing to sell his tribe out to the enemy just so he could salvage himself. So there's no way you could have honor. You are a dishonorable human. Listen, I stopped taking all of those and I started taking this, the Truly and Wellness Shot. In fact, I created this because I was sick and tired of every morning taking 11 different supplements like turmeric, ginger, cayenne pepper, black pepper, vitamin B12, echinacea, vitamin C, zinc, right? Think about this. If you want to improve your immune system, if you want to fight off inflammation in your body so that you have better gut health, you have more energy, your joints don't hurt, then you're going to want to take all those supplements. And I was taking it twice a day, every day. And so when we created the Truly Wellness Shot, we cut no corners and we spared no expense. And so in this, you've got something that's going to not only help boost your immune system, but also fight off inflammation. Because if you're a high performer and if you want to get more done, if you want to stay more focused, if you want to make sure that you don't get sick as frequently, then you have to care about your immune system and you have to fight off inflammation, especially if you're an entrepreneur and you're high performing and you have a stressful work day from time to time, right? And so here's what I want you to do. You're going to click on the link in the description box or go to trulean.com and you're going to use the code word bedros. And when you use my name, bedros, you'll get 50 50% off your first subscribe and save bundle. For whatever reason, you don't like the Truly Wellness Shot, which I have yet to meet anyone who doesn't, then let us know in your first 30 days. We'll give you a full refund part ways as friends. Fair enough? Go check it out. Use the code word BEDROS. Get 50% off. Peace. And guys, it might sound like I'm trying to shit on you, but I'm not. I'm letting you, write, I'm letting you know this moment right now that life has gotten difficult, hasn't it? We knew it had gotten hard over the last decade, and then it accelerated during the pandemic, and the last couple years, interest rates are through the roof. Inflation is eating away at your money. Your pay has not gone up in the equal amounts in terms of inflation and interest rates. Everyone is living paycheck to paycheck out there. The middle class is under attack. You and I must stand in opposition against the opposition. The opposition being big government. Why do you think Oliver Anthony's song was so popular? Rich men north of Richmond. Everyone knew. See, when people hear something that is true, when people hear the truth, the world resonates with it. And the reason Oliver Anthony's music resonated that song rich men north of richmond resonated with everybody and became the number one song and now has become the anthem they say of freedom of what america used to stand for is because in that three or four minute song that man speaks the truth he knows he says the the, the big government they want to know what you think they want to they want to control what you say and they want control compliance over you in every way. They want to know where you're going. They want to know how you're spending your money. They're taxing your money when you make your money. They're taxing your money when you spend your money. They're taxing your money when you die. Your kids will get less of what you have if you don't put it in a trust. The government will tax the shit that you spent money and got taxed on to buy and acquire. They will tax it again. That is the opposition. And the opposition wants to erode your freedoms. The opposition wants to erode your constitutional rights. The opposition wants you to become a modern day slave to them. And if they can put you in the slave mindset where you're just going to make enough money to barely get by and somehow, for whatever reason, be grateful that at least you have enough food for today, enough water for today. You got a mediocre little hovel that you live in that you're supposed to be grateful Fuck that shit. There is no way you ought to be grateful for that. There is no way you ought to be happy with that. There's no way you ought to settle for that. And if you want to get your house in order 
It starts off with getting your personal house in order, physically, get fit, get on a training program, a nutrition program, train five to six days a week, get lean, learn the skills of combat, not so that we can go to war against the opposition. I hope and I pray to God that never happens. But I want you to build the confidence of what a strong man, a capable man, a man who can defend himself has. Because when you know how to box, you know how to roll, you know how to grapple, jujitsu, wrestling, and you have a lean and athletic body that you are proud of when you see yourself in the mirror, that gives you a high level of confidence because it is not one training session and one nutrition session that gets you lean and jacked. It is eating right and training hard over a long period of time and it promotes what? Consistency, focus, discipline, delayed gratification. And those four traits are exactly what you need to thrive in life. Those four traits are the most admirable traits a man can carry. When a man is focused, he is respected. When a man is consistent to his word, to his actions, he is respected. When a man is disciplined, he is respected. When a man can delay gratification and not just look for instant gratification by rubbing one out to the only fans or by screen sucking and losing focus on the work that you're doing. When you could delay gratification and say, I will earn my money. I will earn my dopamine. I will earn my, my serotonin. Like that is the kind of man that I respect and that is getting your house in order. Your physical embodiment shows humanity, the world, that you are focused, consistent, disciplined, and that you will delay gratification. You will have, have absolute control of your impulses to produce the outcome. And that is the type of man that gets respect by women that gets respect by other men and gets respect by by his kids and gets respect by his peers right by your by the people that you lead and manage and who work for you and who work with you and getting your house in order my friends mentally physically emotionally is very important now on the flip side of that i told jimmy and his and his tribe of men i said guys you also have to be financially stout be physically fit but you also have to be financially stout and you know, it's funny because just this morning when I was going through the comments in my YouTube community section on a post that I put up, the post was about how I, when I came to America, we were poor, we were broke, we lived in Section 8 housing. Remember, I escaped communism. And so, you know, we were living in Section 8 housing the first few years that we lived there. And, and, and my, my mom and dad had to make financial decisions based on how much money was left at the end of the month if we were gonna pay for electric bill, gas bill, water bill, because we couldn't pay for all the bills. That was just how it was when we first came to the United States. And I said in that, in that post that I put up in the YouTube community, I said, I never wanna put myself in a position where I have to decide whether I'm paying the electric bill, gas bill, or, or water bill, if I, if I have to get drinking water, a gallon of drinking water versus a gallon of spring water because it costs 50 cents more. I never wanna be in that position to have to negotiate those things. And so I decided as a kid, as a young man, that I was gonna make an obscene amount of money. I was gonna focus on being a great entrepreneur. I was gonna be financially stout because I realized my parents were looking to the government for food, for milk, for cheese, for peanut butter. And we would, have, we would have food stamps, and these food stamps led us to feeling embarrassed, right? Because we would go to the grocery store, we'd go to the supermarket, we would buy something, and my mom and I would be standing there, and the lady would say, well, you know, you can't have the Velveeta cheese, because that's a brand name. You can't buy that with your food stamps. What you can buy with the food stamps is the store brand. And so my mom and I would be embarrassed, we'd walk back to the aisle, switch out the Velveeta for the government brand or the store brought brand, and then we'd go through the line and use our food stamps. I don't want that for my kids. I don't want that for you. I don't want you to have to look to the government or look for a system for handouts. And so in addition to being physically fit, you must be financially stout. And if you have stopped caring about money because, and that's the point I was trying to make here, someone left a comment on that post I was telling you about, well, it's not all about the money, it's not. 
It's not, you mean you're okay with your kids just having mediocre experiences? You don't wanna have your, your kids have like really awesome long vacations and have fly first class and be able to show them the better parts of the world during the times of the seasons when it's like the ideal time to go to Bali, right? You know, at, at BK Live, a few weeks ago at BK Live, we were talking about, I took the stage and I talked about, I don't want to be the family that flies my kids to Bali during the off season when it's hurricane season. And it's, it's, you know, we're staying at a hostel instead of staying at some beautiful resort. I wanna be able to take my family somewhere and enjoy the best of that place. And that means I've gotta make money. And the way I gotta make money is by adding value to humanity in exchange for money, by solving problems in exchange for money. And with the bigger the problems you solve, I've said this before, the bigger the problems you solve, the more money you make. And then once you've done that once, you go, how can I rinse and repeat this on a mass scale? And if you could solve more problems and bigger problems for the masses, you will make more money and have a bigger bank account. And now you can help causes. You know, we've talked about this. Every time I do a live, what do we do? I, when I, I go, hey, when you guys do that, what's it called? The power chats or what the fuck is it called? Super chats. super chats. When you guys do the super chats during those lives, power chats, what the fuck is a power chat, right? But when you when I do those lives and, and you guys pay to ask a question on a super chat, whether it's five bucks or 50 bucks or 500 bucks, I double that money and we donate it to Shriner Children's Hospital. Like collectively here, us tribe together, the BK tribe, we donate money. You, me, together, we donate money to Shriner Children's Hospital. Well, the only way I can double the money that you pay through the super chats is by first having a surplus of money, right? And that is a good thing to have. And when people say, well, well, you know, you haven't, you can't buy happiness with money. I always say, I beg to differ. If if you think money can't buy you happiness, then you haven't given enough of it away. Let me tell you, when I give a lot of money to Shriners Children's Hospital, when I give a lot of money to Compassion International, because we've adopted 97 kids through Compassion, when I have every, every year when we shut down the Target here in town and we go shopping for Christmas for kids in town who would otherwise not have a Christmas gift to open on Christmas morning, and we give thousands of toys to Toys for Tots so that they can hand them out to those kids whose families can't afford to buy a toy. Like that's a damn good feeling. Giving money away or at least using money as a vehicle to serve can buy you happiness. So don't for a moment think that just getting your house in order is being physically fit or making a lot of money. It is a combination of the both because make no mistake about it, when the man is able to provide financially and he's able to show himself as a role model of someone who's physically, mentally, and emotionally fit, you now become a shining example of great humanity. You know that. You know that. And if you're still drinking alcohol, if you're still smoking weed to take the edge off, if you're hitting that vape pen to escape from reality, if you're watching a little bit of porn every night because it just takes the edge off, if you're binge eating or screen sucking for hours on a video game or TV show just to escape your reality. What the fuck are you doing, bro? Honestly, I say this with love. It's time to get your house in order. Like any day now, if things popped off, are you financially in a place to be able to leave home and be able to rebuild somewhere else? Are you physically in a place to be able to fend for your for your possessions, protect your family, if you had to fight your way out of your city? Think about that. And you're like, yeah, but what are the likelihood of those two scenarios? Very slim. The likelihood is very slim of those two scenarios. But you know what's not very slim? Every day when you look into your bank account and you see a surplus of money, and you know that you worked hard, you worked focused, you added value, and you have money there to deploy for your family, for your church, for the cause or charity that you believe in. That is a damn good feeling. And then when you look in the mirror, when you get out of the shower, you're naked and you see your abs, you see your pecs, you see your guns, right? You're like, fuck, man. I'm a walking example of what a, what a healthy physique is. Like, I wanna be a shining example to my daughter of what kind of man to look for, both in personality, both in demeanor, how I carry myself, my core values, physically, mentally, emotionally, and also financially. Like I've conditioned my kids 
to, to see that money is a vehicle to freedom. Money is a vehicle to experiences. Money is a vehicle to serving others, right? Same with my son. He's, he's ripped, he's jacked, he knows how to protect himself, and he's just the most humble, stoic young man at 17 years old, just an absolute servant to humanity, a great kid. Wow, God forbid if I die today, I know Chloe and Andrew are going to be okay. Like I'm in a position where I know my family is good because I have served as an example to them, both on the financial side and on the physical, mental, emotional side. I want to be a shining example. I want you to be a shining example, my friend. Otherwise, you're a cautionary tale and they will want nothing to do with you. And that is heartbreaking for a man because all men want to leave a legacy, want to have a sense of significance and want to have greater impact. And all of that is going to come through you as a shining example or a cautionary tale. Guys, thank you for watching and listening to this episode of the Bedros Koulian Show. And remember this, that average is the enemy, that success is your responsibility and change can take place in an instant when you decide to flip the switch. We'll see you next time.